stop sharing that poll and I'm actually going to uh, introduce myself and then I'll let Stuart introduce himself. He and I are sharing the duties of, of uh, doing this webinar this afternoon. My name is Jen Maher. I've been with Ozabot for about four and a half years. And part of my job is curriculum and instruction, curriculum and instruction, curriculum development. But the other part of my job is professional development delivery. So that's probably my favorite part of what I do is working with all of you and helping you understand a little bit more about how the bots work and how to successfully use them and all the resources that we have to support you in doing that. Um, Stuart just had his seven-year anniversary with Ozabot, and so I'll turn it over to him for a moment to introduce himself. Hi, everyone. Really happy to be on the call with you. Uh, Stuart Wilson-Turner, my current title is Director of Product Management, so um, I'm kind of the overseer of everything that we do as far, uh, you know, as far as Ozabot is concerned. But part of the reason that I'm joining Jen today is I started off and I'm still kind of in charge of QA when I first came on board, testing the bots, working on them, kind of figuring out why things weren't working was one of my, uh, was my main job. And even today it still is. So um, I'm also involved with customer service. So oftentimes when you all reach out through support, um, if there's a problem that you're having that just can't be answered easily, it usually goes to me. So I'm really, really happy to be here today to uh, answer any of your questions and just kind of pass on uh, any of the information I have to make uh, life easier for all of you and your students. Thank you so much, Stuart. So I'm gonna go ahead and share our slide deck that we have for today for you. And know that we are recording this session. And now, I, now that I say that, I wanna make sure that we are recording this session. <laughs> Um, and can you all see my slide screen that's bright pink? Excellent. All right. So we do have a few housekeeping items before we jump right in. Um, if you wouldn't mind keeping your audio off, you noticed that as you came in, you were muted. Go ahead and please leave those muted. And as if you want to turn your video on, you're welcome to do that, but you're also welcome to turn your video off as well. Our amazing Michaela Baruch is here today monitoring the chat. And I believe we have Jeremy McDonald here as well from our EDU team also monitoring the chat. So feel free to pop your questions in there. Again, we are recording the entirety of the webinar and we'll be posting it on the website so that if you for whatever reason, need to go back and watch something again, it'll be available there for you to uh, find easily. All right, <clears throat> we already did our introduction. So what are the world, what in the world are we covering today? Well, the title is has to do with color codes. So we do have some renewed color code guidelines that we wanna share with you today. If you're familiar with color codes, a lot of this will sound very familiar to you, but the importance of when and how to calibrate is going to be one of those things that we talk about, as well as brushing up on the details around drawing color codes. We've left plenty of time near the end of the webinar for our Q&A, so get those burning questions ready. And as we close the webinar, we'll have a survey available for you to share your opinions and suggestions with us. We truly value your thoughts and use your feedback to improve. So I hope you'll take a, a couple of minutes to complete that survey for us. So that's the agenda, but why are we doing this webinar? Well, we want to help you anticipate your students' misconceptions, kind of cut them off at the pass and share the most effective principles about color codes. We also want you to feel prepared to deliver this information to your students. We want you to be empowered in your understanding and know where to go when you need help. So very first thing, color code guidelines. We have a new set of guidelines are, that are available as a PDF on our website. So to find the most updated version of that, you would go to ozabot.com. When you hover over how it works, you'll click on color codes. And then once you click on those color codes, 
right there at the end of that pink arrow is well, where you'll find that PDF that has all of those updated guidelines for you. You can go ahead and print those if you feel the need to. And what is a color code anyway? And how in the world does Evo see those colors? A color code is a short sequence of two to four colors that Evo can read and respond to. The colors green, blue, red, and black make up the recognizable sequences. And you'll see here that the colors are quite specific. The color code chart, this hasn't changed much other than in format, but it lists the color codes that Evo recognizes as programs that it will run or react to. The color code chart is broken up into six categories of speed, direction and special moves, timers, win exits, and counters. You'll notice there's six speeds at the top. Then in the direction and special move section, you'll find the turn at intersection. You can go left, straight, and right. You have a line switch going left, straight, and right. Also two U-turns and three color, a three color code for the middle of lines and a two color code for the end of lines. And last but not least in this section are everyone's favorites, tornado, spin, backwalk, and zigzag. In the timers section, there are pause for three seconds, a timer on, which uh, has the bot turn a 30 second timer on. After 30 seconds, the bot will stop. And there's also a timer off code. Then we have two kinds of win exits. The play again makes a happy sound while the game over makes a sad sound. Then there are the counters at the bottom of the page. Evo can count to five, it's pretty smart. The crossing counter, the turn counter, and the path color counter each count five of those items, and then the bot stops. The point counter is a little different because it relies on the point plus one and point minus one codes. The bot begins with five points and can have no more than five points. As it crosses the point minus one and point plus one codes, it either subtracts a point or adds a point up to five. And then when the bot, the point count is zero, the bot stops. How does that bot see the color codes, however? We've got two different types of sensors on Ozobot, the bottom side of the bot. The row of front sensors look for the contrast between the line and the paper it's drawn on. This is the reason that white paper is always suggested as the surface best suited for line following. Evil will not only follow black lines, but other colors as well. Yellow, however, does pose a unique situation as there isn't much contrast between white paper and a yellow line. So yellow lines are not recommended for line following activities. The color sensor is a little works a little bit differently and Stuart's gonna take us how the color sensor works. Thanks, Jen. Uh, the color sensor, is really focused on <clears throat> just that, color. I know a lot of people in the past have thought that the front sensors detect color, but it, like Jen said, it only detects the contrast. The color sensor specifically looks at the color, those RGB and CYMK values that Jen showed earlier in the documentation, and looks specifically for those colors and a range of those colors. So even though you've seen red, green, blue, and black, we also work on making sure that we have a range of colors so that if it's not exactly that green, it can go a little bit lighter or it can actually go a little bit darker as well. So that's what the uh, color sensor does. The color sensor is solely responsible for identifying the color of the line that the bot is driving on. Thank you, Stuart. Hope that's a little bit more clear now for people to kind of be able to explain to your students how that color sensor works. All right, let's move on to calibration. Calibration is pretty important. So what is it? Calibration allows Evo to detect the light in the space where you're working and adjust itself to better see the lines and the color codes. And when should you calibrate? Calibration should be done at the beginning of each session where you're using Evo and color codes. Calibration is also the first troubleshooting step when your bot is not quite behaving as you are expecting it to behave. 
I'm going to just model the calibration process really quickly. You can actually calibrate from an on state or an off state. So I'm going to set my bot right on a black dot that's just a little bit larger than the bot. Then I'll hold the power buttons on this side. I'm going to hold the power button for approximately three to five seconds or until that top light flashes white. So once that top light flashed white, I let go of the power button and then the bot did a little dance and moved off of the black dot. The moving off of the black dot is the most important part of the calibration because that's how the bot sees the difference between the black color and the white paper. So I'm gonna show you one more time. This time I'm gonna leave the bot on before calibrating. So I'm setting it right on the black dot. I'm gonna hold the power button until that top light flashes. I'll let it go. And you'll notice that top light flashed green. That means that your calibration is successful. If that top light flashes red, you'll want to try calibrating again. And most of the time, the calibration then will be successful. If you've got questions about calibration, throw them in the chat. Or again, we'll have that little Q&A session at the end. There's our uh, procedures of calibrating. Have your black circle, hold the power button for three to five seconds or until that top LED flashes, and then the bot will rotate right and left. Now, this is this page that you're seeing here is also in that color code guide. So keep in mind that this is not like a, where do I find this information? It's all in that color code guide that we pointed out. Also in that color code guide, is a printed page of calibration spots, and then a page of calibration spots that just have the circle. The reason we did that is because something that's a little bit new is if you are printing the lines that your bot is going to be following, we suggest printing a, the calibration spots on the same printer using the same settings so that the bot is seeing that color accurately. If your students are going to be drawing those lines, we suggest that they calibrate to a spot that's actually drawn with the same markers that they'll be drawing the lines with, just so that the colors are the same. And we all think, well, when you look at black, it's always the same color. Well, actually, when you print black, it uses all of the colors as well as the black ink that you're using, especially if you're printing in color. It adds a whole lot of different colors in there so that your black will um, come out darker or will come out just the right shade. And the markers may have a different, a slightly different color black ink in them. So <clears throat> it's important to, when you're using printed lines, print to a printed, calibrate to a printed dot. When you're using drawn, marker drawn lines, calibrate to a marker drawn spot. Again, questions about that, please throw those in the chat. All right, let's get to a few specifics about drawing lines. So again, what you're seeing on the screen is actually a, a screenshot of the color code guides, the color code guide that you can find on the website. So getting into the weeds here about Evo's favorite things. First, Evo loves Ozobot markers. The new version marker of marker packs come with two black markers, one red, one blue, and one green marker. The colors are very specific, as you saw on that first page of the color code guide. So please use Ozobot branded markers for the best results. Next, please use white paper for the highest contrast between the marker line and the paper. Regular old printer paper works just fine. Butcher paper also works, but please avoid papers with a glossy finish. Next, let's talk about the lines themselves. The ideal line width is five millimeters, which is the width of the chisel tip side of the markers. Evo does have a bit of leeway in the width of lines. Lines can be between four and a half and six millimeters, but again, the ideal is five millimeters. Because of how the line following sensor works, lines that are too narrow are difficult for the line following sensor to detect. 
If lines are too wide, the sensors won't be able to see the contrast between the line and the paper. Also, lines that are inconsistent send mixed information to Ozobot that sometimes it can't process. So line spacing is another thing to watch out for. Um, ideal line spacing between lines is one inch so that the bot only sees one line at a time. All right, you uh, didn't know that you were gonna have a quiz. So here is your quiz. Please write in the chat, which line gives Ozobot the best chance for success? I'll give you about 30 seconds. Type that answer in the chat. Oh, you guys are good. Everybody's saying B. That is correct. Line B is the line on which Ozobot will be most successful. All right, corners and curves are next up. Evo's favorite corners measure 90 degrees. If corners are less than 90 degrees, especially corners that are less than 60 degrees, the bot may see the corner as the end of a line and stop. So to ensure that Evo continues on your line, keep corners at least 90 degrees. If corners aren't for you and you prefer curves, be sure that there's at least an inch between one side of the curve and the other. Intersections can also represent many things in a lesson. Increasing engagement, yep, an intersection will do that. As the bot either makes a random choice of direction or is programmed to go a certain way, sometimes that can be really exciting. Evo really appreciates 90 degree intersections. You'll notice on the right side, many variations of intersections that while exciting and creative may not work for Evo. Next, when creating your own tracks, be sure to use the above guidelines and include a calibration circle that will match the black printed track. A few hints for printing. While using, use white multi-purpose paper with no glossy finish, print in color when possible at 100% scale and normal or high quality is usually the best. All right, we have another quiz. Here we go. On which corner will Ozobot be most successful? Please type in the chat which corners, corner or corners give Ozobot the best chance for success. I see a lot of Ds. Ds is correct. There's another one. Actually, C and D. C is a little bit um, skewed, but it's still 90 degrees. Well done. All right, let's get to some specific specifics about drawing color codes. That's kind of hard to say today. All right, so we have a few tips here for you. First, the color code boxes should be approximately five millimeters square. Since the line is five millimeters wide, the length of the color code box, since it's square, should also be five millimeters. With younger students, they may struggle to make the boxes square. So if needed, err on the side of making the boxes slightly longer as opposed to shorter. In any case, try to keep the boxes the same size. Again, line thickness is a major factor in Evo's success in following lines and executing color codes. Ideal, again, is five millimeters, but can vary from four and a half to six millimeters. Lines need to be consistent in width with color codes being the same width as the line. One little side note here, oftentimes when we see troubleshooting pages that come through our support uh, channel, what we see is the, the uh, example on the right hand side on the bottom where the line is one thickness and the color code is much wider than the line. The bot really has trouble detecting that as a color code. So one little word of warning, if you're purchasing tracks online, I would suggest always looking through what you're buying before you purchase those. We've noticed quite a few of those 
types of um, tracks from um, that people are purchasing online. When, purchase all you want. Just check your tracks and make sure they're following the guidelines before you spend any money. All right. You can expect the best success from color codes if the colors are right up against each other with no white space in between the colors. Colors should also not be overlapping or too dark, like when students go over the colors multiple times, that can make those colors too dark. A color code should also be preceded by a black line and followed by a black line. This is actually how Evo recognizes that the color sequence is a color code and not simply changes in color. The only exception is the two color color codes that should be at the end of a line. And finally, some notes about spacing. <clears throat> Leave two inches of black line between color codes. This is mainly so students can observe the action that they just programmed. If a turbo code is followed too closely by a slow code, the student will never see the excitement of going really fast. Leave one inch between a color code and an intersection, but two, code, two inches between color codes. Be sure that color codes are on straight lines and not in the middle of an intersection also. To have a clear view, Evo also needs at least half an inch of white space on either side of a line. Having words or images right up to or crossing a line can get really distracting for Evo. If you must put something really close to the line, make it a very light color with little contrast to the white paper. All right, final quiz. Here's your final exam for today. Please type in the chat on which of these will Ozabot be most successful? I'll give you a moment to look through those and then we'll go through each one. All right, I see everybody, everybody's doing pretty good here. Well done, everyone. All right, so in looking at all of these, granted, they are kind of small, the color codes are kind of small, so let's just kind of go through them. We kind of have to take them uh, in, in the size that they are, right? Um, so letter D is going to be the most successful, mainly because there's straight line before and after the code. Well, I should say on either side, because on this one, the bot could go either way. So we have straight black line before and after the code. And the curves are great, which make it really exciting. However, the bot could read that pretty well. Letter A, that color code is on a curve. And most of the time, the bot will have a hard time uh, reading that as a color code. B is pretty obvious. The color code is right in the middle of the intersection and we need at least an inch between the color code and the intersection for the bot to see it. C is a questionable one for me. There's plenty of space on either side of the color code. However, the corners, if this is an equilateral triangle, those corners are only 60 degrees. So the bot may or may not be able to follow that around. So that's why I did not include C as one of the uh, successful success stories. E, really fun design, but just no. <laughs> um, and F, the line that's around the color code, well, that's a lovely color of blue. It's not, the bot will not read that as a, as a color code. Um, you can make a track like this. I just wouldn't expect that slow code to be read very well. All right. And we have a few more tips. So first, parallel tracks should have one inch between them, one inch between them, and leave a half inch on either side of the lines free so that Ozabot can see that contrast easily. 
Second, special moves zigzag and back walk, which are opposites of each other. This is a special case. They need at least two and a half inches of straight black line after the code to perform the action and to find the line so they can continue following it. That said, if your bot is only traveling one direction on your track, you only need the two and a half inches after the code. However, if the bot can travel either direction on your track, that would mean that it might read it one direction, it might read it the other direction which means that you need two and a half inches on either side. So just know that after those special moves, two and a half inches after those so that the bot can complete the action and find the line again. All right, next we have line switch. The line switch right and left require a parallel line beside it for the bot to find the line and continue following. So when the bot comes along to a line switch, just after the code, it will turn either right or left, depending on which code you're using, and travel perpendicular to the line it was originally on, which means it needs another perpendicular line to come to. In other words, here, here's your geometry lesson for today. Those two perpendicular uh, directions make a parallel line, right? So you have one line going this way, one line going the same direction. The bot will travel off of one and find the other. The line switch straight requires a perpendicular line to the original line of travel because the bot's going to travel straight off the end of the line, but it needs a perpendicular line to find the new line to travel on. All right, our next thing, leave two inches between color codes so students can observe the action of the program they just used. If a student uses turbo again, like the early example, followed an inch later by a slow code, it will, won't see the change in speed very well. Next, leave one inch between a color code and an intersection or a corner. And two color, Two color, color codes should be at the end of a line with not quite an inch or 20 millimeters of white space after the end of the line. And in our color code guidelines, we again included the printable pages for the calibration. So there's the one with the printable dots and the ones where the students will fill in the dots. But there's also the last page is a page of graph paper. The graph paper has boxes that are five millimeters by five millimeters, just to give students some practice in creating their color codes and creating their lines. You can copy that page for students to practice and uh, Eva will see those well. All right, next, to assist your youngest students with their coding precision, we have a relative, relatively new product that saved a lot of soap and water. With the color code magnets, you can leave the markers in the box and get your kids coding with immediate success. The magnets come in three sets, the base kit, the speed kit, and the special moves kit. And there are pre-made age appropriate lessons that go with each kit. These lessons are shorter, of course, to accommodate the shorter attention spans of your youngest programmers. The color code magnets can be ordered on our website or through your regional account representative. And now you're asking, well, where can I find all these lessons that you've been mentioning throughout this whole thing? You can find those in Ozabot Classroom. Ozabot Classroom, easy to find, classroom.ozabot.com. And what you're seeing here is the dashboard page. Be sure to check it out. You'll find everything from pacing guides, instructions on how to update and rename bots, and best of all, 600 plus lessons that are ready to go, including direct instruction. Some even have video instruction. There's the activity sheets and answer keys covering computer science, math, language arts, science, and many other subjects. And best of all, it's all free. So you've gotten into your lesson and a question comes up that you don't know the answer for. Your first line of defense is support at ozabot.com. <clears throat> I can guarantee that the answers you get from them 
Stewart, will be more accurate and more timely than any other source of information. So we are here to help you and we're here to help your students be successful.